Hey people, Hutch here with Freedom in a Can. Now we've been living off the grid in our tiny vintage camper for nearly 12 years. And along the way, we've helped more than a few people go solar. Today, we're gonna talk about switches and how we can use two simple switches to move power around in our rig from where we're producing it to where we might need it. This helps us maximize our small solar powered system and save a lot of money. Now, as our small business has grown over the years, so have our energy demands and our solar equipment. Let's take a quick look at a diagram of our system. We actually have two separate systems that do slightly different things for us, but can be interconnected when needed. Now that first switch and first system is in the back of our trailer, where we have 200 watts of flexible solar panels on the roof. These send power into a 40 amp MPPT charge controller and charge 200 amp hours of Renogy LFP Pro batteries. These awesome batteries run our DC load through a DC fuse box and our 700 watt inverter powers our AC load. So we can run our life, satellite internet, charge laptops, electronics, run the lights and the fan, everything we need to stay healthy, happy, and employed. Now it's approaching summertime, and during the summer we like to put the camper in the shade to take advantage of that passive cooling of the forest. But out in the sunshine, we can add a 400 watt lightweight portable panel on a 25 foot extension cord to maximize both the summer sun and that passive forest cooling. However, it's really important to remember that because our two solar arrays, that is the rooftop panels and the portable panel are of different wattages. And so they shouldn't go into the charge controller at the same time. So we're gonna use this first switch to isolate the solar panel array that powers the controller. So if we're driving or parked out in the sun, we can leave the rooftop panels connected. But if we go into the shade, we can switch that input to the portable panel. And you can see here that we have one fused input for the rooftop panels and one input for the portable panel. Now nothing really bad is gonna happen if both of these panels happen to be connected at the same time. It's just that we're gonna lose the efficiency of that 400 watt panel out there that's on the ground. When combining panels together of different wattages, they always go to the lowest common denominator. So it's always a best practice to use panels of the same wattages or isolate your arrays as we're doing here. And if you wanna check out our review of that lightweight 400 watt panel, you can do so right here or in the video description below. Now that second switch goes along with the second system, which we have in the back of our truck, where we have a 50 amp hour LFP battery that gets charged by a 30 amp dual input DC to DC charger while we're driving. Now this battery runs our 12 volt Iceco fridge freezer. This is what keeps our food cold and safe, and it's worked great for three years now. If we're boondocking for more than three days without running the truck, we can put out our small 100 watt portable panel and give that battery a little boost. But during the autumn, winter, and spring, when temperatures fluctuate from moderate to downright cold, the 12 volt fridge doesn't need to run every day and so the battery doesn't always need to be charged. This is often the same time that sunlight might be a little bit more scarce because of winter weather or that low sun angle in the winter. So while we're driving, this second switch right here in the back of the truck allows us to send 30 amps of charging current from the DC to DC charger back to our 200 amp hour battery bank in the trailer through this Anderson connector, which runs to the main positive and negative DC bus bars inside our solar cabinet. Now we've noticed that this system boosts our state of charge on our trailer batteries by up to 20% for every hour of driving. And this can be super helpful during those rainy days or when the sun is just not able to keep up with our energy demands. So we hope this gives you some additional ideas for how to maximize a small solar powered system. Hey, give us a follow and check out the oodles of resources we have on our website at freedominacan.com. Give us a holler if you have any questions and we hope to see you on the road.